Good morning, everyone. It's a little after 3.30 in the morning, and I am headed on down to do some backpacking this weekend uh, in West Virginia's Dolly Sods Wilderness in Monongahela National Forest. Out on the trail. Um, yeah, I got my bag packed last night. Did most of the prep work then. Doing a short walk to get to the trailhead. I'm excited for this weekend because I'm trying out a few different things. Number one being I am hiking, or rather backpacking in trail runners, which I've never done before. Number two is I'm using smart water bottles. It's right there. They're lighter than the Nalgene's by a little bit. So see how that goes. And also my filter screws right onto the cap. So that's uh, convenient. And then number three, I am, this is my first time taking my new uh, quilt. It's like a sleeping bag, but it's, a quilt um, so I'm very excited for that just signed in it's the dolly sod special on the bear rocks trail just left the trailhead and I'm headed towards the I think it's Raven Ridge trail out of my element. I'm out of the northeast. Um, but I've hiked this area two times before. It's pretty awesome. There's some super cool spots. Like the train's so varied. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> this is the first time being back here in so long. Just like views for miles. So aside from these trail signs, at the intersection of trails. Um, Dolly Sods is not blazed by any sort of trail marker. Um, I think because of its wilderness area classification. But yeah, it's just, uh, just those signs to guide me. made it across Red Creek without getting my feet wet. Now I got a little bit of a climb to get out onto the plateau again. Right when you cross the creek, there's a, a really nice campsite that I actually stayed at uh, both times I've been here before. Because it's a short hike in, perfect for like getting in late. Just got to the intersection with the Bear Rocks Trail and Raven Ridge Trail. I'm taking a pack off break. I have some snacks for lunch. So, one thing Dolly Sods is known for is the mud and the wet trail.
This is so awesome. Everything is so green. The wildflowers are out too. The trail has also been more or less a stream since I made the turn off onto the Raven Ridge Trail. And I know before I get to my campsite tonight that there's one other like probably flooded out section, like completely flooded out section. Just got to the trail intersection with the Dobin Grade Trail that I will be following for a little bit till I get to the Upper Red Creek Trail, I believe it is. Quick few tenths of a mile and then I'm on the uh, Upper Red Creek Trail now. And I take this pretty much, I think all the way to the campsite, my planned campsite. There's really no point to trying to avoid any mud. It's uh, inevitable at this point, which is fine. I mean, you know, I expected this. I know the terrain here. Some like, <laughs> almost fucking slipped. <laughs> oh, funny. Gotta be careful, my freaking shoe's gonna come off. I'll say now that I've surrendered myself to uh, the mud, hiking is just easy because I can like freaking walk straight through it and not care. I'll be near water tonight, so. It'll be good, I can kind of like wash off. Cause uh, don't really want to climb into my sleeping bag with uh, all this crap on me. Just about six miles in and I'm at the intersection between the Blackbird Knob Trail and the Red Creek Trail that I will take down to uh, Red Creek. Um, I'm probably like a mile, a little over a mile to where I'm originally planning on camping. We'll see how I feel getting down there. Um, if I was to push on further to the campsite that I'm thinking about, I'd have to do like a six tenth of a mile downhill to get to, which is not bad, but I'd have to reclimb it in the mornings. This is the section that I remember that is flooded. The good thing is that I do not care that my feet get wet because um, they're already soaked. So I'm just gonna go through this. It's no use even trying. I remember coming through here. I think the November trip that I did over here, like desperately trying to avoid all this. And uh, <laughs> it's not possible. But the bright side is that my shoes got cleaned off a little bit, just in time to get more mud on them. Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to ford this creek because I don't see a clear footpath across. So, and also my legs are wet already, so it doesn't even matter. So, not that bad. Got my shoes cleaned off. The water felt great. Only went up to about almost my calf. But current wasn't strong, so that's good. This might be my favorite campsite ever. One of my favorite campsites ever. I stayed 
here back in 2019. Like right next to the fork of the forks of the Red Creek. And uh, the campsite is behind me. There's nobody there, so uh, it's so tempting. I think I might stay here. three o'clock and I am going to call it. I'm going to stay at my intended campsite at Forks of the Red Creek. First thing I'm going to do is get my tent set up right here and then I'm going to clean off because I am very dirty. But literally like tent goes there and yeah. All right, let's see the contrast between dirt and clean skin. Oh yeah. <laughs> now I'm sitting back in my stone recliner, having a pre-dinner snack of Pringles. And uh, I'm enjoying this. This is an awesome loop. I'm so glad I'm out here. Just really debating on not hiking this weekend but I decided the weather's good enough to the point where you know sitting at home isn't gonna do it for me <laughs> and uh, I just kind of want to be out doing something so I'm glad I'm here that might have been the first time I did that in like 15 years I am tired. I might take a nap. Also, I got up at like three today, so that could probably be why I'm feeling tired at, uh, I don't know what time it is right now. It might be like four, that's my guess. I think I'm probably gonna retreat to the tent and, and nap for a little bit. So it's about seven o'clock right now. Um, I slept for a good like, maybe two and a half hours, maybe a little bit less. Um, it was one of those naps where you like wake up and you're disoriented um, and it's later than you'd want. But uh, either way, I'm up and I'm making dinner right now. It's cooled down significantly. I think it's supposed to get down into the upper 40s tonight, which is nice, I'm all for that. Love the colder weather. <laughs> So I really didn't do any grocery shopping for this trip because I thought I had enough. And I do. Um, of course, this is like a little bit, uh, not as much as I would I would like to eat. It's 440 calories per package. It's a little bit low. So for this wilderness area, bear cans are not required, but I am carrying one because um, I figure it's just good weight training. Have you ever seen a better looking bear can? All the freaking stickers on there. Hell yeah. Gives it personality. All right, we're all done. It's looking a little soupy, but I didn't add milk, which this recipe calls for. So uh, honestly, it's expected. Um, and I think I had a little too much water in there. But, no worries, it's all going to the same place. So, a quick overview for tomorrow. I have about 11 miles and 1,000 feet of elevation gain to get to the next campsite that I'm planning on using. The one issue, um, not really an issue, but an annoying thing is that uh, I don't think there's a reliable water source near where I'm planning on camping. So my plan is to take three liters of water from the last water source that I, last reliable water source that I believe I'll run into and carry that all the way to camp. So I will be carrying five liters, including my two smart water bottles to camp with me um, to have enough to cook, do dishes and you know, drink obviously.
I'm all tucked in, ready for bed. I got my clothes pillow right there. Got my quilt, which is so comfortable. It's down, so it's, oh my God. I like treated myself because I move around when I sleep and I also sleep on my stomach. So um, mummy sleeping bags, the traditional kind are like not conducive to me like being comfortable. And I kind of just figured that out. So um, this is like, I took my nap, but I like was under this, it was so nice, oh my God. End of day one at Dolly Sods. And this place is so much fun to backpack through. The terrain, once you get past the mud, is, is relatively easy. And the scenery is just so unique for this area of the East Coast. Just like the open fields and, and whatnot. Give you like really great views. And uh, a lot of the rock formations here are pretty cool. There's a lot of windswept rock. So I'll be able to see a little bit more of that tomorrow as well. I love camping, hiking, backpacking. It's so much fun. Can't you tell, can't you tell I love doing this stuff? Started day two here at Dolly Sots and uh, had a good night's sleep. It got down into the 40s, definitely, but I was more than comfortable under my uh, under my quilt that I have, so it's a success right there. Got some coffee and oatmeal, some granola, maybe a Pop-Tart if I feel like it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a good day. You can feel it. All right, all packed up and ready to go. Unless it's 9.15, so time to head out onto the trail. Intersection with the breathed mountain, breathed. English is confusing. Um, trail. I'm not taking that one. I'm taking the Red Creek Trail and then I'm continuing along the Rocky Point Trail. This stretch of trail is so pretty. It's like a mix of pine trees and rhododendrons. It has a, it's like a weird feel. This is the Rocky Point Trail for a reason. Uh, trails just kind of started to turn into this. Just got to the turnoff for Lion's Head. So it's a short scramble up to there. And then I don't know where the view of the Lion's Head is. So in essence, it's a rock formation that looks like a Lion's Head. Um, I didn't see that the first time I was up there, but hopefully I'll be able to this time, or I'll at least know where to look. This campsite is so awesome. It's like surrounded by these rhododendrons and uh, it's like enclosed. These rocks are massive. That's the lion's head. I think it's viewed better from above. I scrambled down here to get a better view, but I'm gonna have to go back up to my pack and then it looks a little bit more like a lion's head.
again, these rocks are insane. Damn. Hiking down from the lion's head right now and uh, meeting back up with the Rocky Point Trail. Just intersected the Rocky Point Trail. So my next checkpoint is the Big Stone Coal Trail. Trail junction with the Big Stone Coal Trail. And uh, I continue up. And uh, eventually I think I intersect with the Blackbird Knob. No, the Breathed Mountain Trail. Breathed, maybe. This area of Dolly Sods is so pretty. I love the pine forest right next to the creek. I, I parallel this stream. I think it's a big stone coal run. It's the same one that um, the waterfall, it flows over the, it's, it's the waterfall essentially. Um, yeah, I, I cross it a few times. I just crossed it back there. I just stopped and filled up both water bottles Oop. and most of this three liter water bag because I think this is the last water source for a while um, and I don't know that the place I'm going to be camping tonight has water. It was just, uh, it was just like the stream right beyond that. It wasn't exactly what I would call running so hopefully that water's okay. Of course after I collect all that water I run into like three different spots that would have been better to get water from. Alright, so just got to the intersection with the Breathed Mountain Trail and uh, I continue up along the Big Stone Coal Trail. Maybe it's not called that anymore. Blackbird Knob Trail. Yeah, that's right. So I continue up this. It's a little bit of a climb up to Harmon Knob. Thought it was an appropriate spot to have a lunch break with that view and also this bench. Yeah, this is nice. I think I got about three more miles or they're about to where I'm supposed to be camping. Just had a bunch of snacks. I'm about to drink a little bit more water. And then I sunscreened up because hopefully I'm not going to get burned. It's definitely the right environment to get burned in.
up at like 4,000 feet. Not much shade, but uh, we'll see. This is what I was looking for. I knew this rock was around here. That's so cool. All right, I think I have maybe two more miles until I get to camp where I'm planning on camping. So just gonna crank this out, enjoy the scenery. I think I'll probably be there in two hours. Views for days, pretty awesome. Should be turning off onto the Raven Ridge Trail, I think it is. I'm not entirely sure. All I know is I'm turning to the right in a little bit. Got to the Raven Ridge Trail, and it's 1.2 miles to the Beaver View Trail, and I think my campsite is just off that. So, gonna get a move on. It is 3.40, so I think maybe a little less than an hour I'll be there. I was doing so good, and I sunk. Darn. I think it might be inevitable at this point. And I found this spot tucked away. And uh, I think this will be camp tonight. It's a nice open field over there. That's cool. But uh, I'll set my tent up somewhere over here. It. Not too bad, but not great either. Unfortunate thing is I don't have a stream to wash off in. So maybe if I have some extra water, I'll uh, use that. pretty good it's like a walmart brand but you know walmart has had like pretty good mac and cheese like they have like different cheese blends flavors i guess types um because this one's like gouda and uh 
Kraft only has, like, the freaking regular one in the Parmesan, or, I forget what it is, but, um, this, this one's pretty good. I would add some, like, chicken, um, but I didn't go shopping for this trip, so, um, chicken, it's, like, good to add, like, bacon, too, like, the pre-cooked stuff. Already finished up dinner, cleaned up, and distributed the last of my water. I have two liters over there. Uh, nothing left in the bag, so um, that should be enough, more than enough for the two and a half mile hike out tomorrow. So cool, you can see where I walked along that ridge, and then came around over, and then came forward. Walking back to camp, going to get the rest of my tent set up because I need to put the rain fly on, and then, yeah, gonna enjoy the last night here. Look at how tucked away and cozy this campsite is. It's like so dark in here. Home sweet home for the night. All right, packed up pretty quickly. It's about 7.45 and I am on the move. Got two and a half miles to get back to the car, but I have two tenths of a mile, I think, till I complete my loop and then I just am backtracking on stuff that I did Friday. So really didn't get that cold last night. It was maybe down into the 50s, but I was warm. It's awesome, I can kind of see cars in the distance. There's like shining things. It's where I gotta go. And unfortunately, it's a little bit of a climb to get there. It's not that bad, but generally it's not the most fun to be ending a backpacking trip hiking uphill. It's all good though. Okay, loop is complete. Now I just have a little bit of hiking to do on the Bear Rocks Trail. I gotta do two ascents. One is coming up pretty shortly, and then the other is a slow climb up to the parking lot. So I'm back at the Red Creek crossing I did a few days ago. Looks significantly drier because I, I didn't I don't think there was that bridge of rocks. Last stretch of trail. I can see the cars in the distance that I kind of just ducked behind that uphill. But uh yeah, I would say probably a little less than a half mile, maybe half a mile. To go and we're back at the trailhead i just have a little bit more to go to get down to my car over there other than that it's done dolly sod's loop it was a good one I've said it like a million times but so glad i was able to get out here again uh, totally different like experience than the previous two times, so I'm happy. I'll also be happy to um, go get some coffee. Back at the car, all packed up and ready to go. So it was a great weekend, um, awesome place, and uh, yeah, if you watch, thank you for watching. So 
see you in the next one.